guys, it is Carl Brown from GuitarLessons365.com. I have a highly requested one for you guys today. We're going to do Damage Incorporated off of Master of Puppets. Classic. Uh, one of my favorite tracks on the album, so it's going to be a long one and a fun one. So, uh, we are in standard tuning here. Um, and uh, before I get into it, please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. I've got lots of Metallica stuff. I'm always releasing Metallica stuff. Um, and ring that little notification bell so you know when I release a video. And if you have YouTube on your phone, make sure you enable notifications so you'll actually know when I release a video too. And please check out my Guitar Academy. It's at guitarlessons365.com. It's got all my guitar courses, um, a lot of cool stuff there. And I want to thank all the people that have become members of this channel, have joined the channel, support the channel with their little monthly contribution. Helps me keep this going. So if you're not, please join the channel. Uh, it'll really help me uh, keep cranking these things out. All right, so let's do this. We're going to start here, not with what I just played. I did a little uh, guitar arrangement of um, Cliff Burton's uh, little reverse bass chord intro, uh, which is actually based off a Bach chorale prelude called um, uh, Come Sweet Death, which is, you know, Pleasant. Anyway, so here's what I came up with that. For that, I have a little cool little uh, auto swell thing done with my my Line Six Helix here. So it sounds like this. So that's obviously not going to sound exactly like it's not the intention here, but uh, it's, it's really cool kind of pu putting all those volume swells that he's doing. Um, he's got some slidey sliding out of the notes and stuff too, and just kind of arrange them for one guitar to do with a cool little patch. So uh, hopefully you're interested in doing this. If not, you can just skip to the actual uh, guitar parts of the song. So we have this, this A power chord off the... Uh, I'm just hitting off the 5th fret of the low E string, the 7th uh, fret of the A and the D. And then, I, so I'm, I'm picking the low note with the pick, and then the other two notes, I'm, I'm just hybrid picking. I'm, the, I'm picking using my middle and my ring finger for all this stuff. It's a couple of chords I just kind of strum, uh, just regular bar chords. All right, then I get to this G major, which is a 3rd uh, fret on the low E, 5th fret on the D, and 4th fret on the G. to a B minor here, which is going to be the second fret of the A string, fourth fret of the G, third fret of the B. So we have that. It's kind of hitting them all at the same time and letting it swell in. You can use a volume pedal if you don't have a little auto feature that'll do it for you, like on the Helix, or with your volume knob. All right, and then we're going to go up to an A major here. Which is going to be the fifth fret of the low E, six on the G, five on the B. So so far we have this. So that's to a D major chord there. I'm gonna cover that uh, fifth on the A. 7 on the G and the B. From there, we're going to go to a bar here at the 7th fret. And you're going to also have the 9th fret there on the D. So I'm picking the low E, the D string, and then the B string. 
So I gotta kind of separate those two notes now in the 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 uh, middle on the ring, and then do the same thing one fret higher, and then the same thing at the third fret. So after that D major chord. From there, we're just gonna strum lightly, just a regular A major bar chord, then a G major bar chord. And then that kind of starts us over, back with that B minor. And the same thing from that B minor that we did before. Here is when I get down here to this this G chord here. Um, that second time around, I'm playing that, that seven, eight, three. Let that ring, and then add the fourth fret there on the G by itself, and then back to the same thing again. That A bar chord to the G, and then back to the B minor again, and same sequence of chords. What I do on this last one is I just kind of make it a little bit bigger. Um, I'm using my thumb on the low E string, the third fret, fifth fret on the D, uh, the, uh, the fifth fifth fret on the I'm sorry, it's the D note on the A string, fifth fret on the A, and then third fret, I mean fifth fret on the D, then the open G, and then the open, and then the, the third fret down the B. Let that swell in. So that's. I thought that was kind of a cool thing. If you have a Metallica cover band and you people will know what that is, then you can just actually play it on some kind of cool setting on your guitar. All right. So let's get to the first when the band first enters here. We have this. <laughs> All right. So. Pretty easy stuff, E power chord. Go to the F power chord, the first fret, and heavily palm mute it. Down, up, down. So this. Repeat. And then you're gonna basically do the same thing, except kind of faster hits on the low E. All right, so you're still doing a little kind of muted hits there on the th first fret there. And then we get to the main riff, really fast one, uh, fun to play though. So we are, what we're going to be doing is just on the low E, just rapid palm muting, um, alternate picking there, the low, low E string, and then you're going to go into this. So what that is, it's going to be a, uh, a muted fifth fret there on the low E string, and then you're going to pick the seventh fret there on the A and the D together. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna put, uh, you're gonna keep this, you might wanna keep that bar there. You're just gonna add the pinky there at the eighth fret on the D. So it's gonna be still the seventh fret on the A, and then now the eighth fret on the D. And I hit that with an upstroke. So we have this. So you do that three times, so. Now, 
Now, so uh, the third time of playing that, we go, we go, kind of make it to that, um, the, the, the uh, two sevens there, the, you get there right at the, not hit on the, the third time of playing that, you're gonna hit those two sevens, and I like to change the fingerings I do there, because I'm gonna shift this chord down to the second fret real quick. And then when you get there, you're gonna start doing the rapid alternate picking there on the second fret there, Louis. E. And then what he does is he jumps up to the kind of the same pattern. Muted third fret there on the low E string, and you're gonna play the two fives that on the A and the D. And then the note that changes on the D string is you're gonna go down to the fourth fret. So you're gonna keep that fifth fret there on the A. Alright, so after you've done that a couple of times, we end it with this. So that's the fifth, uh, the power chord here at the second fret off the A string. Oh, the third fret power chord off the low E. Then the open A power chord. Then back to that third fret power chord off the low E. Then take it down to the second fret, and that's when you'll just. Uh, and just some rapid all muted alternate picking again. So we have All right, so you'll see that riff again uh, a little bit later. Uh, he also plays it uh, during the rhythm guitar part of the solo. All right, so now we have the verse. You'll see James play this slightly different um, at one little part live, um, but you can tell on the recording that he doesn't quite play it like that. Um, he kind of plays it like Kirk plays it live. So uh, I'm going to do it that way and not worry about... I'll, t I'll show you when it, we get there. So anyway, it sounds like this. I won't go all the way there. All right, so what we're going to be doing here is going to pick the sixth fret power chord off the low E, slide down to three. And then the rhythm after that on the open E string, it's a quick little one, two, three, so down, up, down, and then kind of a slower group of two hits. So I just do those with down three. And then another group of three. So like this. So all together. So I basically do that three times. So all together. So it's uh, when it comes together, it's pretty quick. The fourth time is this is where James plays it a little bit different live. Um, on the recording, it's this. So on the recording, he's gonna, basically it's the same riff, except uh, you're gonna slide from six down to one. And do that first group of three on that one. And then it's back on the open E for the rest of the rhythm pattern. So it's like. What he does live, probably because it's kind of hard to sing and dance and all, you know, James is a big dancer, you know, on stage. Um, he actually plays it that B flat. He plays it here and doesn't slide. He just like that. But you'll see Kurt continue to. He does it like that. So on the recording, there's an obvious slide there. So I just recommend uh, like that. So all together.
All right, then we repeat. All right, so now the second time around with the riff, instead of that sliding down to the first fret, we end it like this. Which is kind of just, there's rapid alternate picking there um, off the fifth fret there of the A, str a string. You can play the full power chord. Or just, just a single note, but then six on the load. And repeat. So then when you repeat the second time around live, I think both of them, and it makes sense, this little, he actually plays it like this. And so he moves that chord down here, because that steps right into the chorus. So I'll play both times through, so you can see that little different ending there. So wait a second. I just started doing that. I switch it down to the first fret there. And then that takes us to the chorus. Uh, pretty easy part. So that's that same ending that we did earlier. Just done twice. All right, so then we go back to a kind of abbreviated version of the, the, when the band first entered, the whole band, the little. All right, so that's just, that's all they do there. It's just kind of that same hit. And they start doing those fast E5s, and they don't, they don't do that little first fret again. They just jump right back into the, uh, the verse section. All right, so that's the same, and then the chorus is the same. Um, and then we get to the, uh, the end of the chorus, which will have that, the end of the second chorus. There's a little extended, it's, it's kind of another one where they just kind of hit those, do the rapid picking there on the second fret power chord, which takes us into the interlude slash bridge section. Really cool riff. So let me play this part. There's actually two guitar parts here, distinct parts here. Um, so let me play through the main one here. Alright, so it's pretty involved. Not the hardest thing to memorize though. So um, what we're going to do here is we're going to start with two E's, uh, two hits on the low E, just downstairs. And the key to this riff is to remember that every time you're playing the seventh fret on the, um, on the A string, play it with a quick down up. And, and you kind of go back and hit the low E real quick too. So down up, down. So this. Then the rest of the riff is pretty easy. We're gonna play, uh, for the rest of the notes, you're always gonna pick just the note once. So the eighth fret right there on the A string, and then the open E just once, and then the fifth fret on the A string, and then the open E once. So once again, we're gonna start with two open E strings. And then the pattern is gonna go seven, eight, Five. You're always hitting the open E after each one of those, and you're going to play the seventh fret twice. Let's play this. All right, now we're going to go seven, eight, seven. So remember, every time you play seven, you're going to hit that note twice, and you're always hitting the low E after each uh, uh, note on the A string. So we have this. So 
So, uh, so just the notes on the A string. That'll be make it easy. So we have that seven, eight, five, seven, eight, seven. So from there. All right, so remember, it starts with two open E's, then. And then you're gonna end the riff. There's a variation of this a little bit. Um, which is the sixth fret power chord off the um, E string. So we have this. So after you've done it three times there, you're going to have a different ending. So that starts the same. Same there, but then we're gonna go seven, three, five. So remember, at three and five. The only you're still gonna hit the open E between each note on the A string. And there, the power chord there at the second fret off the A string. So all together. Same riff done three times. Take that, and you uh, are going to repeat that twice um, before the then the vocals come in over it, and you just keep repeating that same riff. Now, over that um, live, I usually see Hetfield will play that riff when it's played kind of by itself, uh, and we have these chords, kind of that going with it. So. And so what's that? Uh, you'll see it was the first fret power chord here, palm muted, kind of down, up, down, to the first fret power chord off the A string. Now the last one, he goes up and hits the uh, B power chord, the second fret of the A string, so it's like, now this one's up the second fret. So still the kind of F meets there. And then as the riff continues, we have this open E power chord and let ring, and then just like do the same thing. So you're always gonna end it, go first you that B flat power chord. And up to the so it's the same thing. So and that's coming over underneath that kind of stuff. All right. So um, from there, we just add that we saw the same. You can kind of end it with that, that kind of a riff there, and that takes us into the rhythm for underneath the solo. So this, like I said, has is very similar to the second half of it to the intro of this or the main riff of the song. So we have this. Here's the uh, Hitfield's part doing the solo. <laughs>
All right, so that is just basically starting out with just a low E. For a while, then take it up to the F sharp. And then it's just the intro riff after that. All right, so same thing, same little ending we have there for the chorus. The end of the solo. Except now, the second time I'm playing that riff, when you get down to the second fret, we're going to build up chromatically. Two, three, four, five. All right? So that's just uh, the rhythms for the solo. Now I'm going to play through uh, Kirk Hammett's solo for you real quick. Uh, it's going to be a fun one, and then we'll check it out, how to play it phrase by phrase. <laughs> So let's take a look at this solo. A lot of uh, kind of signature uh, Kirk Hammett type stuff in there. Um, we're going to start with um, just kind of this rep repetitive lick that you've probably seen him kind of do this kind of thing before, where he's really just kind of... It's almost like a tremolo picked thing in the right hand, and he's just going kind of rotating between the 15 and 12 and the high E string. So he just kind of... And then what he does is he takes that and he starts kind of doing a more of a tremolo pick, uh, repeating the, the 15th fret. Like that a little bit. And then kind of going 15, uh, 14, 12. So we have this. Kind of, so all that together. Like, all right, just kind of something like that. And then just picks kind of pick straight through them a couple of times now. So it's kind of like three ways of playing that. We have this. And then repeating the top note with the 15, 14, 12. And then picking straight through them into a bend there at the uh, 15th fret on the high E string. So we have this all together. All right, now the next phrase looks like this. All right, so I'm gonna stop when we get to that note. Kind of, that kind of starts a new pattern. So it's, you can get it as, it's kind of, kind of a quick little sweep, I think. So you're sliding into the 16 on the G, and you're playing 15 on the B, and 14 on the high E. So you wanna make those sound like, um, just like a quick sweep. So when we get there, you can kind of go up to 17, 15, 17, back down, 15, 14. So this and then what you'll do is you're going to pull off a couple of times, 15 to 14 on the high E. And then 17 on the B, back to 14 on the high E and back to that 17 on the B. So we have this. Now here, at this point, it's a little bit easier to memorize because we start like a little uh, uh, descending pattern. So it's a little three note lick that he's descending 
uh, and then he starts from the next note in the scale and descends. So it's a little, it's a little three-note sequence that he's taking down through the scale. So let me just show you the uh, the notes of the scale first, and then we'll look at the pattern that he plays across it. So, so we're gonna play 15, 14 on the B, then 16, uh, 14, 13 on the G. Oh, we'll do 16 on the D string. So those are the notes. And what you're gonna do now is you're gonna just play a pattern, a three note pattern. You're gonna start from the top note, the first note, play three notes down from it, just follow the scale. Now do three notes down again, but now starting from the next note down in the scale. And then the next note down. And then the next note. So you can see right there, I did some pull-offs there. So whenever there's two notes on the same string, I'm usually just kind of pulling off the next one. So it's like. Even here, I slid down to that. All right, now here we start this new little lick, which is a little bit difficult to play. There's probably easier areas on the fretboard to play it. Um, but the way he does it is with some rolls across the, uh, the D and the G string, just like this. And then I'll move it up. All right, so that lick. Starts at the 14th fret there on the D string. You're gonna roll over to the 14th on the G string. You're gonna pick that twice. Pull off to 13, over to 16 on the D. So that's really the lick. And the repeat. And then you're gonna jump up to here, the 16 on the D string with your middle finger. So that's 16, and it's the same pattern, except obviously the finger, the, the frets are gonna be a little bit different. So you're gonna, from 16 on the D, roll over to 16 on the G, pick that twice, pull off to 12. Over to 18 on the D. So that's the the uh, the dose now. So you do that twice, and then we do this. This one's a little bit easier. You're gonna play that 16, same uh, note on the D string, the 16th fret, and then up to 18 twice on the G string. Pull off to 16. Pull off to 14. So just kind of repeat that. Repeat. So from here, so coming at this. All right, and then we get to some unison bands. All right, so those unison bends are the 14th fret on the high E string, and then the bending on the 17th fret on the B string. And then we just have kind of a quick little blues lick there, which is just hammering on 14 to 17, pull back off to 14 on the B over to 16 on the G. So just repeat that, you know. So that's coming out of the... All right, and then from here, we have this really cool look. So what's going on there? We're gonna pull off, we're gonna pick uh, 10 on B, pull off to 7, and then pick the open B string twice. 
Now you're going to repeat that exact same thing, except now you're going to just move the notes in the left hand up one fret each time. So now it's set up 7, 10, it's 8, 11. Then 9, 12, 10, 13, 11, 14, 12, 15, 13, 16, 14. Uh, so we have this. All right, when you get there, now we start the next phrase, which looks like this. So that's uh, unison bin again, but now instead of the 14th fret, it's at the 12th. Pick the 14th, the, that uh, 15th fret there on the B, release it, and play 12, 13. So. All right, then. So it's kind of sliding into the 15th fret on the B string. And then play 14, 15, 17 on the high E into a bend there. Kind of release down to 15, 14, back to 15. All right, now he kind of stays in this position and plays this lick. All right, so this is one of those licks that, you know, getting exactly note for note, not that important, but it's just kind of more like this. Uh, something like that. I'm just kind of making it up. So really, the notes, it's just kind of what is... He's just kind of going for it. Just between 15, 14, 17 on the high E, 15, 14, 17 on the B, and then 14, 16 on the G. So... Just have a field day with those notes. And at the very end of the lick, when he gets down to that note, when he gets down to that note, come up and grab the octave of that at the 17th fret on the high E. And then we're back down to that note. So it's kind of... And then we're going to end it kind of with the same lick we did there earlier. So you're going to start it with a bend there at the 16th fret on the, uh, the uh, G string. And then you get into that leg. And you're going to end it with a bend on the high E 17th fret. So. All right. Uh, next section. All right, I'll stop there, even though it's kind of in between sections. Now, he kicks in the wah pedal here. I didn't kick in. I, I don't have the wah pedal engaged here. It's a, it's a pain for me to do it when I'm sitting down. So I just uh, not going to use it. So you know it comes in here. So it's uh, this oblique bend here. So that you're holding the 15th fret on the B string and then the, seven, uh, the uh, 14th fret on the G. So you're going to be bending up that 14th fret. And then we go into this. It's kind of similar to the first very phrase in the song where we're just playing that 15, 14, 12. You gotta hit, hit the top note a couple times each time before we're going through all three notes. Into the 15 fret bend there. All right, this next section's a little bit crazy, a little bit crazy lick. Uh, looks like this. All right, so the, we're back to some tremolo picking here, and we just need to know, go up the scale, so we're just up the E minor here. So uh, 12, 14, 15, 17. Then you're gonna start back going up again, but this time from 15, so 15, 17, 19. Then 17, 19, 20, so he's kinda, he's going up the scale, then 19, 20, 22. So the first one was the one we had four notes to start it. And then, starting from the 15th fret, it's always three notes. And always starting the next note up in the scale. So it is. And when it gets to the 22nd fret, uh, you know, no rules from here. It's just literally a three note pattern that he's 
You can do any kind of, any kind of three note pattern you, you, you feel like doing, but uh, you can be just like, just, uh, he just creates chaos. Just kind of take it down the string. 22, 20, 19, if you want. Take that down to about the 10th fret or, you know, bigger, just two whole step shape. All right, it's supposed to sound like chaos, and it is. All right, then we get to that same ending. And then he has this little tapping lick that ends it, which is... All right, so... Yeah, that's it. So it's uh, it's gonna be just 10 seven in the left hand the entire time. And it's, it's a simple three note tapping lick. So we're gonna tap the 12th fret. You can use your middle finger if you want. Tap 12, pull off the 10, and pull off the seven. So it's a simple tapping lick. And you're gonna repeat it, the tap of the 12th fret twice. Then just move up the tapping finger one fret and do that again. And then again. 14, then to 15. And when you get to 16, you can start just kind of, just really, he just, right then, he just really starts kind of going up a fret at a time and just doesn't really worry about it. All right, now, so out of the solo, we have that same uh, riff that we had at the interlude, but just with a slight, uh, slightly different, little variation of it so it has looks like this all right so basically the only thing that is different is when you're Ending it that first time through with the uh, the B flat power chord off the sixth fret of the the, a, the uh, low E string, and then when you start the riff again, the second time through you're going to do it with the D power chord off the fifth fret of the A. So that's the difference, and then the rest of the riff is the same, same as it was before. So basically, that second time through the chord, you're just going to switch it from that B flat to the D. All right, fro. All right, so that's just that quick little variation, one chord difference, and then we get um, um, from there. We're just gonna be uh, going back into the uh, the verse, just like we played before. All right, so now we get to the chorus, which is at the at the end of the song, and it's slightly different than the other ones. It looks like this. All right, so same the first time through. Now we just hit each one twice. All right, so the end of the track, pretty simple stuff. Coming out of that uh, chorus, let's look this. All right, so it's just like that riff we did earlier, just that low E hiss. And then up to the first fret. It's kind of four hits there, muted. And we are done. All right, so it's a marathon, just like a lot of this classic Metallic is, but I hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, me breaking it down for you note for note. And I will see you guys again soon for guitarlessons365.com.